the webinar is now live, so I assume everyone can hear me. Good morning uh, from Sunny Bradford, a cold Sunny Bradford. Uh, thank you for joining us to celebrate the launch of Enterprise West Yorkshire, a new program to promote entrepreneurship across the region that is being funded by West Yorkshire Combined Authority and delivered in association with the Leeds City Region Enterprise Partnership, the Leeds LEP. My name is Cameron Rashid and I'm a member of the LEP, LEP board in Leeds and I'm also the CEO and founder of Impact Hub Bradford. And I'm really excited to be hosting this session today and I'm really uh, um, yeah, looking forward to hearing the speakers that have been lined up. Um, so before we go on, uh, sorry, just to get my thoughts out, before we go on, I just want to kind of give you an overview of what to expect from today's session. As I mentioned, today is the launch of Enterprise West Yorkshire, new programme to promote entre entrepreneurship in West Yorkshire. So today you're going to hear a little bit from myself, but then I'm going to be passing on to Tracy Brabin, who's going to be interviewed by Medina Akbar, uh, a young student from Batley Girls High School, and I'm really excited to be hearing that interview. We're then going to be hearing from Jane and Lorna, and Jane and Lorna work at the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, and they're the people that work the machinery to make the events like this happen, to put the programme together and make sure everyone in our region gets these great opportunities. We're then going to be hearing from four uh, entrepreneurs who are based in West Yorkshire, who have started their enterprise and are running it, and we're going to hear some of the insights from them about what it means to start a business here in West Yorkshire and how support, uh, how the support they've received has got them to where they are. And we hope that you find that really interesting. I know I'm looking forward to that. And then at the end, we're hopefully going to be hearing from uh, Ro our very own Sir Roger Marsh, will be interviewing Heba Bevan. Heba Bevan is an award-winning entrepreneur who's looking at relocating to West Yorkshire. Heba has just recently, from what I understand last month, won the Vodafone Woman of the Year in Innovation. Now she's on a flight back from Portugal, Lisbon, and fingers crossed she will make it. She has promised us that when she lands, she will get the laptop open, open be on this Zoom call, and will be joining us. We do have a backup plan, but I'm sure, fingers crossed, that luck is on our side today, and that we're gonna have Heba, because if you read her profile, it's absolutely phenomenal. The business that she's running is very exciting, and I, for one, am very excited to hear about her story and her experience. And then we're going to finish off with a section with, uh, uh, with, for questions and answers. Now, if you do have any questions during uh, anything that you hear today, please pop it in the chat. The chat function will be monitored. We will be kind of collating the questions. We're not going to be answering them as we go along. We're going to kind of cur uh, curate them at the end. Now, we will be taking a number of the questions and putting it to the panel. Those questions that we don't answer during our question and answer session today, I know Lorna and Jane and the team at West Yorkshire Combined, Combined Authority will be producing an FAQ that we'll be sharing with you after the event, so don't worry. And no question is stupid. Any question you have, please, please, please put it down. We hope to finish by 11. We may finish a little bit earlier. But that's the agenda for today and what we hope you will get as a result of taking part and participating and giving up your time to hear this uh, about this program today is we want you to be inspired by the stories of the entrepreneurs that you're going to hear today. And we want you to see West Yorkshire as a place that you can start a business and see that this is a program that could support you on that journey. One of the key components of this program is to ensure that we get a diverse uh, a cohort of beneficiaries and we reflect the district that we live in. Now, if you are from, uh, if you're a woman, if you're from a minoritized community, if you have a disability or from any other protected characteristics, this program is working its hardest to ensure that it gives you the support that you need as well and that the program targets our whole district and our whole region, should I say. So if you work with these communities and you hear something today and you think this is a program that can really benefit the communities and the individuals you work with, we, we, we will ask you to please share the opportunity across your networks. And uh, finally, I think the last thing is if there's anything you hear about the program or any insights you hear and you think, do you know what, they should know about this or have they considered that the program is really up for listening and kind of taking on your feedback. So please give us your feedback. Now, that's the overview of the agenda for today and what we hope you will walk away with. And just a little bit about myself. So as I mentioned, I'm here in my capacity as a director of the Leeds City Region Let Board. 
I'm really proud of joining the LEP board last February, actually. And what makes me incredibly proud of the Leeds LEP board is that from what I understand, it's the most diverse and inclusive LEP board in the country. And I'm proud to be part of that. And I know a lot of that has to do with the work of people like Sir Roger Marsh and the way that he's worked to ensure that all voices across our region are included. So when I was asked to kind of host today, today I was more than happy to step up and uh, take on this opportunity. The LEP board and uh, working with West Yorkshire Combined Authority over the past year and a half has worked incredibly hard to understand the impact of COVID on our region. Now, part of the uh, West Yorkshire Combined Authorities and the LEP's uh, response and its economic recovery plan for the region, we believe that enterprise is going to be a key enabler for our recovery in the region. Now, it's going to be programmes like this programme that's going to support that economic recovery for our region. And we want all the diverse communities of our region to benefit from this opportunity. And that's why we're here today hearing about an enterprise programme very soon after the end of lockdown. And as we feel, fingers crossed, we're in the recovery phase of the pandemic now. Now, a little bit about myself. So when I'm not doing the let board position in my day job, I'm a co-founder and chief executive of Impact Hub Bradford, based here in Little Germany in Bradford. Now, Impact Hub Bradford is a social enterprise. And in a very brief overview, if those of you that don't know what social enterprise is, if a business is here and a charity is here, a social enterprise kind of sits somewhere in the middle. So a social enterprise delivers social impact like a charity. But unlike a charity, it has a business model where it generates its income to deliver the impact that it sought out to deliver or has the vision to deliver. Unlike a charity which is more dependent on grants and donations, a social enterprise has a business model. So we launched last year. We're one hub of 105 hubs globally. We're part of the world's largest network of social innovators. And if anyone is interested in finding out more about what Impact Hub Bradford does, and uh, if you're keen to see it or get involved in any of our programs, do go onto our website, bradford.impacthub.net, and you'll see what we're up to. Now, moving along with the agenda, I'm really um, excited to be hearing from Tracy Brabin, the first uh, metro mayor in the country, the first female metro mayor in the country who is going to be interviewed by Medina Akbar, a young student from Batley Girls High School. Now, why I'm incredibly proud of having the first female mayor in the country uh, in our region is I became the father of a second daughter just this summer. So as a father of two daughters, it's incredibly important for me and my daughters to see people who they can look up to, who look like them, and think that this is a region where they can also be successful, that they don't need to leave the region. And it's when they have role models who look like them that they can be successful. And I know that people like Tracy, and I'm sure Medina will go on to do equally as well, will be the role models my daughters need, who are seven, months old, seven years old and four months old. So I'm really proud to be handing over to um, our first Metro Mayor, first female Metro Mayor in the UK, Tracy Brabin. Over to you. Cameron, that was so inspirational. Thank you for your leadership. And I'm so excited to be here today, one of the first big programmes we're going to be launching for West Yorkshire. I've been in the job six months and already we're delivering on the ground. So I want to thank my teams and everybody at the Mayoral Combined Authority that's got us to this point so swiftly. Six million pounds that's going to be dedicated to supporting entrepreneurs around West Yorkshire. I'm also thrilled as the ex-Member of Parliament for Batley and Spen, to have my friends here with me today. We've got Yusra and Zoya, um, students at Batley Girls, and I'm really looking forward to being interviewed by Medina, um, my friends from Batley Girls High School. I was always hugely impressed by the ambition that they had for their youngsters and young women there and, and how they were supported to fulfill their potential and to follow their dreams. So. I'm really excited to be here today, and I can't think of a more fitting introduction to this great entre um, entrepreneurial scheme than to be interviewed by students from Batley Girls High School. So over to you, Medina. Well, <clears throat> now, um, you've spoken previously about the importance of uh, business startups for the economy. 
So what are you going to be launching today? Well, today is the Enterprise West Yorkshire. It's an entrepreneur's scheme and it's in three parts. So people who have want to just hear a little bit about what an entrepreneur is, somebody with an idea and wants to make it into a business. And then those people are supported to maybe um, a business, uh, they make a business case and a business plan. And then those people who've got a really brilliant idea that looks like potentially it could do incredibly well, will get even more support. So there's three strands to the programme. And it's an opportunity for those with a good idea to get support from the LEP and from myself. And my mom always used to say, um, think of something you love, then think of how you're going to make money out of it. And you never have to work again because you're doing something you love. And actually, that's paying the bills. So it's trying to encourage um, everyone to find the thing they love, then work out how to make money. Um, and why are you targeting underrepresented groups such as ethnic minorities or women? Um, don't they get the same access to support? Well, sadly, we know that that's not the case, unfortunately. I stood as your mayor on a manifesto that was about equality, diversity and inclusion. And I know there are brilliant ideas everywhere across West Yorkshire but not everybody gets that same opportunity. And if I may, I'm just gonna read you a couple of statistics that really do give me rocket fuel about why this program is important and why it's important that we get those from black, Asian, minority ethnic backgrounds, women, and also those uh, who are not able-bodied to um, and have a disability to think about setting up a business. Ethnic minority business ownership was evident in only 12% of the self-employed. Uh, the average turnover for black African entrepreneurs is only 17,000 in comparison to 35,000 for wh uh, white entrepreneurs. Um, half of black Asian and other minority ethnic business owners meet their non-financial aims compared with 69% of white business owners. This can't be allowed to continue because as we recover from the pandemic, we know that um, individuals setting up businesses are going to help us recover because they create jobs. They create jobs in their community. So all those entrepreneurs in Batley and Spen will employ potentially people who live in Batley and Spen. So there will be more money in that community, more money in people's pockets spent in local shops, in local businesses, and we get a, a rise of uh, the quality of life for communities that are potentially the furthest away from access to finance. Because 71% of young people feel that they need support to start a business. Now, some young people have family support and that's great. They have family money, that's great. But there are lots of people like me when I was growing up on that council estate in Batley that had no connections and no money. Well, we are trying to be um, the organization that will support everybody to get going. Um, how are you going to spread the word that this new program is available? Well, today is, is a, a good start, but I, I often think it's word of mouth. Um, we can advertise and we will be advertising. We're doing programs in schools. You've got your wonderful teachers here. They're going to be um, encouraging you to think about ideas for businesses. But it's about you talking to your friends and your friends talking to friends and um, having that opportunity um, to you know, come to organizations like this one and say, I've got an idea and be on this scheme. And often people will be so busy with their idea or trying to set up a business, they don't think about coming to organizations like ours. I mean, what are these organizations? What's a LEP? Not everybody would know what that is. So I'll be doing, um, interviews and we'll be trying to get it out on the telly uh, to make sure that everybody, wherever you live, whatever your parents do, have the chance to think that you could set up your own business. <clears throat> and how will you influence the young minds to see um, starting up a business as a potential career option? Well, it's also about working with organisations that work with young people. So. <laughs> The Princess Trust 
are helping us um, work in schools and trying to get the message out there. Um, obviously, uh, there, are, there are other schemes that we work with, which is uh, banks. So I think it's um, Lloyds Bank and NatWest uh, expert in residence, which is women in business. We're going to be working with them to try and um, get people aware of what's going on. But what's really important, I think, is that phrase, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So it's really, really important, as Cameron said in his introduction, that we all see people who look and sound like us, who have similar backgrounds to us, who maybe live around the corner from us, doing well, talking about how they got started and helping each other. And let's not forget, you know, we all need someone to help us get started. So I've always I wanted to drop the ladder for others to come up behind me and I'm hoping that other business leaders will take this opportunity to drop the ladder for young uh, women, uh, people of colour and those with disability to get them started in their business because what we don't want is people to be excluded from success. We want everybody to have a slice of the success of West Yorkshire. Um, what about Sorry, my love, I've just, uh, I've just lost you. Go on. Um, what about if you had a business idea? Well, I, I did have a business idea when I was at university. I, um, I, I was on a, a, a I, I had my fees paid, but I needed to earn money to live. So I had a jewelry business. It wasn't really a business. I just bought bits of beads and wire and made um, earrings and then sold them in the student's union at lunchtime. Um, and other students used to buy them, they were really well priced. And it, it gave, gave me a bit of money. So I had money in my pocket. Um, so whatever your interest, and I've always been quite crafty, whatever your interest, you can try and make money out of it. So if you like painting, and I know lots of girls are badly uh, a really good artist, you can sell those paintings online or in local cafes. If you, if you like making clothes, I did that for a bit. I got um, a, a printer, a hand printer, and printed fabric and made clothes that I sold to work colleagues when I was working in recruitment. Um, so just the things that you like to do, to sell them, you know, try and make a little bit of money out of them so you can buy more, more of the stuff you need to make the stuff and um, then hopefully get to a point where you can employ someone else and then you can start selling abroad. And so, you know, the, the world is your oyster once you get going, but it's also about having confidence. And I believe that we have some amazing entrepreneurs in West Yorkshire that don't even see themselves as entrepreneurs because they don't know anyone who's set up a business, but this is their chance to get involved. And I really hope that you all will think about what do I like to do? Is it, do I like running? Do I, you know, do I, do I like dog walking? Can I set up a little business? Do I like tech? Am I interested in climate change? Are the things that I've been thinking about that I could turn into a business? So I have no doubt that we'll definitely get applications from Batley Girls. And uh, what can young people do to spread the word? Well, things like this, um, and also, like I said, tell your friends and your mates. Social media is really important. So if you can help me amplify this scheme through TikTok or through um, uh, WhatsApp and social media, that would be really, really helpful. And also just be brave and, and put ideas in because when people hear that you're doing it, they might have the confidence then to do it themselves. So we can't do this without young people because this is what it's about. So uh, I'm hoping that lots of young people will hear about it and get involved. And I want to, I, I definitely want to be hearing about your great ideas. All of you, you don't get away with it. Um, so thank you for the, uh, the invitation to be interviewed by you. And hopefully I'll see you in person before too long. Um, lastly, have you ever had... Um... Have you ever had a business idea? Um, I would, sorry, I, just, I think I'm, I misheard your previous question, talking about the jewellery business. Um, but if I could say that when I was an actor, 
and a writer, I was freelance. So basically I was my business. So when I wasn't working, I had to find another job. So, so much of that is about, about like running a business, about promotion, finding out who is employing people, what shows are coming up, um, uh, training. So making sure that I sang, that I, I was um, going to the gym so I was fit, so I was ready for work. So when you're out of work, I think there's a phrase that's called pre-employment. So in your head, think, if, if I knew that I was going to have a job in two months' time, what I would I be doing to get ready for that job in two months' time? So trying to get your head sorted to be ready for those opportunities. So I suppose as a freelancer, I was always running my own business, but also, you know, making clothes, making jewellery was a way that I made extra money on the side. And I think um, when you're freelance, you're always striving and hustling, trying to find the next job, the next bit of money. Um, so you're always looking for new business ideas. But I, I would say that, um, you know, be ready for the moment. So don't wait for the moment to come to you. Be ready. And, you know, when that moment's going to happen, be ready, fit get your ideas sorted and get things down on paper. And I would always say, if you've got a great idea, it's, o it's only a great idea in your head unless you write it down. So get things written down, um, give it to other people for their comments, people you, you, know, you trust, your family and your friends, and let them help you with their good ideas as well. Thank you. That was such a pleasure and lovely to see you. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you, Medina. I've got to say, can we have a virtual round of applause for Medina? How much confidence does it take to be a young person to interview you know, a celebrity mayor or pretty much a mayor that you see on the TV all the time and to have that courage and confidence? And it links me to a point, actually, uh, Tracy, that I know you mentioned Prince's Trust. Prince's Trust, a few years ago, did a piece of research around some of the barriers and challenges facing young people getting into employment or starting a business. And many people would think, oh, it's they need the experience, they need the skills, they need the knowledge. And one of the things that they need is confidence. And they said 83% of uh, young people said that the biggest barrier they faced in getting employment was confidence, issues in confidence. And I think one of the ways you can overcome that is seeing role models like yourself. I think we've previously touched on that but also hearing the stories of other entrepreneurs. And I'm really you know, excited to hear the stories of five entrepreneurs today. So Medina and the girls with you, Tracy, I hope um, that you, know, uh, you take inspiration from the speakers that we have lined up in today's launch event. But Tracy and Medina and the girls there, thank you so much. Uh, final point, I will say, Tracy, I absolutely love the saying, I work in social enterprise, so we're about delivering good as well as making profit. And your mum's comment of, think of something you love and make money of it, you'll never work a day in your life. And I think I've done that. And to be on a call this morning with great people like yourself, it actually doesn't feel like work. So I think your mother had some wise words there, Tracy. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out and uh, joining us this morning. So what a fantastic start to the session. And yeah, congratulations again, Medina. I think you were great. You should be incredibly proud of yourself. We're now going to hear a lot more about the program. So we've heard about the importance of enterprise, the, the, uh, the mayor's backing for this program. But what does the uh, program, what will it deliver? What are its, its ambitions? And the people that have been working and leading this is uh, uh, Jane Green and Lorna Holroyd from West Yorkshire Combined Authority. And they're now gonna share insights and an overview of the program. And I think this is the time to probably get your notepad and pen out, take your notes, write your questions. This is the real mechanics of the program. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Jane and Lorna. Thanks, Cameron. So we're just going to uh, use PowerPoint just to give you the details of the program and how we set this up. So as Cameron said, I'm Jane Green with my colleague Lorna, and we're going to go through the support for startups in West Yorkshire. So if we can move on a slide, brilliant, thanks Lorna. So 
Just to give you a bit of a background, so this programme is designed to respond to the challenges that we have been raised through our West Yorkshire Economic Recovery Plan, thinking about people being made unemployed, the end of furlough, but also as being discussed those underrepresented groups in, in uh, business startup and how we come through this, this uh, pandemic and we get businesses starting again and people gaining employment. So it's a three year programme, so it will run right through to October 2024, and it's funded through £6 million worth of gain share money, which is from our devolution deal for West Yorkshire Combined Authority. So the support will be for West Yorkshire residents and those wishing to start a business in West Yorkshire. As, as has previously been discussed and, and really well um, uh, highlighted by our mayor, we really want to target underrepresented groups in the region. So looking at disadvantaged communities, people who've been made redundant due to COVID-19, and in particular women and people with ethnic minority backgrounds, because they are really underrepresented in this area. So we have some targets set for the programme, and their minimum targets of 50% female, 20% from ethnic minority, and 3% of people who identify as disabled. And the insight from this is um, as Cameron and Tracy have previously said, there's um, a lot of young people who feel they need support to set up a business and don't know where to go for advice. And we know that women are underrepresented as business owners in, in the UK and in our region. And also when we look at the Alison Rose report, and we, we speak to our colleagues at NatWest and Lloyds, we know that uh, UK venture funding is um, really limited for female entrepreneurs as well. So we want to ensure that all the access to support is there and highlighted and it's easy for people to access because that's one of the difficult things is where you go for advice. And as, as the mayor said, it's highlighting that West Yorkshire Combined Authority, at least City Region Let, can actually support people in this. Oops. And we're really, really proud of the ecosystem that we have in West Yorkshire. We know that there's lots of business support um, uh, providers in our region. Um, and this slide just gives you a very small selection of the wide range of support that we have. And many of you on this webinar will be from providers and community groups that support people in business startup in, in the region. So the support we're offering is aimed to fill gaps in provision, not duplicate. And we want to work with you to make sure that the businesses starting up in West Yorkshire have this really strong ecosystem and that we're the best in the country at supporting our, our businesses to start up. So we'd like to come over to you now and you should, um, if, if we can work it right, you should see a poll pop up on your screen. So we're just interested from the experience that you have, what you think are the biggest barriers preventing people from starting a business. And of course, there'll be many more options than this, but if you can have a think of the options here. So we've got lack of confidence, not having access to the funding that's needed, sort of perceived lack of knowledge or experienced by the individual or simply not knowing where to go for advice. So I can see it keeps shifting as people put their votes in, <laughs> but we'll give you a few more seconds to have a think. Okay, are we gonna close it Jane? Share the results. So it's actually very split, isn't it? The most is down to you think that people don't have the knowledge and experience to be able to start a business. But through the programme, we're looking to address all of these barriers. So we want to give people the confidence to be able to start a business. We want to let them know where they can go to access funding. We want to give them the knowledge and access to people with experience to support them to do that. And also to provide opportunities to meet with peers like themselves. So they've got other people People that they can ask for advice about starting a business. So we hope that we're able to try to address all of these barriers through this programme. Okay, so it's split into three work streams. So work stream one is about promoting entrepreneurship as a career choice. So that could be in schools or colleges, but people of all ages, career changes, letting them know that becoming self-employed is a career option. 
Workstream 2 is then about providing practical support to individuals once they've made that decision that they want to start a business. And Workstream 3 is about providing high intensity support to those that have the potential to become innovative entrepreneurs. So I'll hand back to Jane to talk you through Workstream 1. Thanks, Lorna. So Workstream 1 is about pre-startup. It's about promoting self-employment as a career choice for people of all ages, including school leavers and graduates, but also adults looking at changing career path, maybe due to furlough or redundancy or underemployment. And that's something that we're really looking at, particularly with our graduates in the region. So we've split this support into three, three sections, a marketing campaign, some workshops and school resources and support. And this, this piece of support is about people being able to say, explore um, setting up a business, but also having that option to say, that's not for me. And so, I, you know, I need to support in, in getting a job or retraining. So the first piece, piece is our marketing campaign. And this is just an ex, some sample social media pieces that we're looking at to um, and really engage people um, to think about what's stopping them starting a business so they can find that those answers and wondering whether it's the right thing, thing for, for them. So what we want to do to make sure in this marketing campaign is it's a real people like me campaign. So as, as our mayor said, if you can't see it, you can't be it. And, and what we really want to do is highlight our amazing entrepreneurs in this region so that people can reflect and see people like them setting up a business and being successful. The next part of this, this uh, work stream is about workshops. And this is help, helping people really explore whether actually setting up a business is the right thing for them. So look at their, do some personality tests, there's some online resources so they can understand what it actually takes to set up a business. And there's some live workshops with experts talking about finance and, and building up confidence as well. This is going to be delivered by a business called Digital Remit. The other things that they're going to offer is um, an Ask Me Anything roadshow from local entrepreneurs. There's networking events and also a radio show podcast um, support that can highlight our entrepreneurs in the region and be able to reach out to, to people in the region. But the key thing about this, this work stream is the offboarding support. So being able to be referred to work stream two if they've got a business idea or to another start, other startup support. As I mentioned, the ecosystem, work stream two might not be right for somebody, but some other support might be. And the, the other piece is making that choice of, do you know what setting up a business isn't for me, but I do need some support to get a job or to reskill or upskill so that I still achieve my ambitions. And that will be an important part of this work stream. And then finally, as, as was fantastic to see the, the students from Batley Girls School, we need to support young people to think about setting up a business as a career choice. In schools, there's lots of discussion about different sectors and different subjects and how they relate to, to jobs. But what we don't do well I think is actually showing the steps that you can make in West Yorkshire to set up a business. So we need to provide some teacher CPD to support teachers and how they can discuss this with students. We need to attach this to events that, that schools may run like Global Entrepreneurship Week and regional events that, that we have going around the region. And we want to ensure that there's some school delivery that will be um, tendered for delivery in 2022 that will support work with our school's partnership team and our local authorities and the wider networks to um, ensure that young people, and particularly in disadvantaged areas, ethnic minority groups and girls, really get that insight of, you know, giving that confidence, as, as the mayor said, but also seeing where the opportunities are and how we can support them in West Yorkshire um, so that they can get that support and progress. And the outputs for this, so we've got some, uh, we, we want to ensure that we're engaging lots of people. So the marketing campaign, we really want to engage um, 100,000 people and 3,000 individuals to be able to access the workshops and the support that's there. We also want to reach 15,000 young people and I have at least 100 enterprise projects carried out within our education institutions. And that's right from primary school through to university. So they're ensuring that everybody gets those opportunities. Thank you, Jane. So Workstream 2 
So this is about supporting people once they've made that decision that they want to start a business and it will be delivered by a company called People Plus under the Adventure brand, but it will be called Startup West Yorkshire. Um, businesses must be pre-start or have been trading for less than 12 months to be eligible. And I think one of the, the most exciting things about this is that it will be available to anybody wanting to start any business in any sector, including social enterprises, cooperatives and businesses selling directly to consumers. And that's something that we haven't been able to do with lots of our other programmes due to funding restrictions that we've had. So it's really, really exciting that anybody starting any business can access this programme. And that's really what differentiates it from the standard adventure program that is more suited to businesses trading with other businesses that have plans to scale up. So this program will appeal to businesses trading directly to consumers or people that just want to become self-employed and they don't have any immediate plans to scale up. Supporting the delivery of this will also have startup managers that will be based within each of the West Yorkshire local authorities and they'll be able to support pre-start and early stage businesses to access all the support that's available to them across the region. So what will the client journey look like for somebody that takes part in this programme? Well, they'll complete an inquiry form on the Adventure website and that will be reviewed by a business advisor at People Plus. And if this is the right program for them, they'll then complete a diagnostic with that business advisor, which will be a deeper dive into that individual and what they're looking to do and achieve with their business. And from that, they'll get a personalized pathway um, that will put together a package of support for them, which will include at least 12 hours of workshop support. And there's lots of different topics that are available. So it really be personalized to that individual and the areas where they need support. And there'll also be one-to-one -one support that will be available if individuals will benefit from that as well. In terms of the outputs, we want at least 1,500 people to access this support. And of those, 500 to also access the additional one-to-one -one coaching and mentoring. We've got some job targets, um, which are through the new businesses that will be created as a result of this programme. And also some of them may go on to recruit additional staff as their businesses grow. So thinking about work streams one and two, we're interested to know what you think would be the best delivery method for our workshops. With COVID, you know, a lot of our activity has moved online, but we're now in a position where we can do something back face to face again, or we could do a mixture of both. So thinking about the individuals that you're working with, we'd like to know which delivery style you think would work best for them. Looks like this one is very clear cut so far from the results that we're getting back in. But we'll give you a few more seconds to have a think. OK, shall we close it there? So the vast majority of you think that a mixture of both would work best. So thank you for that. And that's something that will definitely bear in mind with the delivery of both of those work streams. So thank you for that. So work stream three. So this is about providing intensive support for individuals with the potential to become innovative entrepreneurs. And they will need to have a potentially unique idea which addressed as a societal problem, has a large market, has the potential to develop, has the potential to scale and can be financially sustainable. And the individuals that benefit from this work stream will also need to not be able to do this without the support of this program because of societal or situational barriers that they face. Now, this work stream isn't live yet. Um, it's going out for imminent tender release and there's some information there. If you are a delivery provider and you're interested in tendering for this um, and we'll also circulate some information after the event. So really kind of to finish, um, what's our call to action for you? So work streams one and two are now live. We can accept referrals to both work streams and everybody that has 
registered via Eventbrite will receive some information via email following this event, which will include information on how to make those referrals into those programs. Workstream 3 should launch next year and you'll receive further information at that time. So we'd really like you to have a think about anyone that you're working with that you think would benefit from the program and that you could refer in, as well as any other groups that you're aware of in our communities that you think would like to engage with us on this program. And if you do have any ideas, our contact details are at the end of the slides here. And like I say, you'll also be getting an email from us. If you do have any questions about anything that we've discussed so far or anything raised by any of the other panellists, if you could please put them in the Q&A function and um, we will try to answer some of those questions at the end of the session today. But like Cameron mentioned earlier, we'll also go away and come back to you afterwards if we don't get a chance to answer them all. So please use the Q&A function rather than the chat function. So final poll for us to finish, um, as the, the Mayor and Cameron and Jane have all talked about, it's really important to us that we are able to reach our diverse communities through this programme. So we're interested in what you think is the best way to do that. Is it through traditional press like newspapers and radio, social media, through our website? through working collaboratively with other organisations like yourselves or through the new startup managers that will be employed in the local authorities. So we'll give you a few more seconds on this one. Again, it's looking pretty clear. <laughs> it's a good comment, Lorna, that it's all of these and I think that's a... a yeah, <laughs> we think it's all of them, but it's good to know that, that you agree. Um, but working collaboratively live collaborative cat speak <laughs> working with other organizations across the region is seen as as the key one there and that's what we're looking to do and that's why we've invited all of you to this launch event today so that we can let you know about this and we can continue this journey with you and work with you to let people know that this program is out there so finally, our contact details are there. So if you do know anyone that you'd want to refer into the programme, they can get in touch with us. Or if you've got any ideas that you think of after the event, then please do send them through to us and we'll pick up and come back to you. Thank you so much for listening. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Jane. And thank you, Lorna. I, there was a comment that really stuck out for me, what Jane said, saying we want to be best in the country. And I think that's really important. I think as a York, us Yorkshire folk are very proud of where we come from, rightfully so, God's own country. And why shouldn't we have these ambitions? Why shouldn't we have our you know, uh, shoulders back and chest out and think proud of our region? And it's programs like this that will make our region absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Jane and Lorna. Uh, they do all the hard work sometimes it's not always recognized but it's them who put these programs together and um, make them available to our region we are five minutes ahead of schedule which is great um, it's always good to be ahead of uh, the agenda schedule then running over so we might finish five minutes sooner or we could take some additional questions at the end now just to reiterate if you have any questions i know two have appeared please use the Q&A function and not the chat function. It's the Q&A function that will be monitored and it's where we will be taking our questions from. Uh, the PowerPoints will be shared, information will be shared, but if you do have any that you would like, either the four panelists that you're gonna hear from now, if it's a question to Tracy, to Lorna Jane, Sir Roger or Heba, uh, Heba when she joins us, or even to Medina, please put them in the Q&A and we will be curating a number of them questions to present to the panelists later on. But the next section, which is for me, one of the most exciting section is to hear from the people who benefit from programs like this. Now this program wasn't launched when the uh, next four entrepreneurs who we hear from were launching their business. So they've not accessed support from this program, but I'm sure if this program was around when they were starting up and maybe some of you do qualify for it, would be accessing this support and would be accessing this program. Now, I'm very proud to say we've got a real diverse lineup of speakers. We've got a few gents and a few women, and we've got the, I think we've got the region well represented as well. So from Leeds all the way across to Hudders Huddersfield, including Kirklees and Bradford, Bradford on route. And what we're gonna now do is hear from four entrepreneurs based in our region, and including the, there's a diversity of sector as well. They're not all in the same businesses. 
And I'd like to say many of them are also delivering social impact, which makes me as a social entrepreneur extremely excited. And the first of our four speakers or um, panelists, should I say, we're going to be asking them all a number of questions is Nasif Ahmed. Nasif is a carbon entrepreneur and an environmentalist based in Leeds, England. And as the founder and director of Reshift Limited, he helps SMEs in the UK create and sustain their net zero journey through zero carbon. Now very, very fitting and very timely given COP26 is happening as we speak. We'll then also be hearing from panelist Callum Ronan. Uh, Callum runs create, is a creative based in Leeds, West Yorkshire, and he, is a he runs a podcast production agency specialising in short and long term podcasts that aim to inform and educate their audiences to grow brand and awareness. We'll also be hearing from Tanya. Tanya is originally from Greece, moved to the UK to study architect architecture at Huddersfield Uni. And then since qualifying, Tanya has specialised in healthcare architecture, designing and delivering projects for the NHS and private healthcare providers. And finally, and no means least, we will be hearing from Krishna. And do please forgive me. Um, is it Dilishek? Dilishek? All right, I'll, we'll, we'll hear the uh, correct pronunciation of that when Krishna comes on. But Krishna is the co-founder and director of Dilish, Dilish Curry Pace, based in Huddersfield. It's a family business created to share their love for home-cooked food with those who like to know what they eat. So without further ado, I have a question for you all. And we'll start with, through in the order that I've kind of introduced you is, what is the story behind your business? And we'll start with you, Nasif. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Kamran. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, just like you mentioned earlier about Yorkshire being God's own country, where I'm coming from, from India, we call our town as God's own country as well. So I just moved from a God's own country to another God's own country. Uh, it's quite exciting to be here. And um, I think, yeah, like you mentioned, our product is, uh, you know, just measuring, helping businesses measure and reduce their impact on the planet. And um, I think as an environmentalist and uh, sort of a renewable energy engineer myself, I was always inclined towards doing, having a net positive impact on the planet uh, myself. And um of course, for me, I was lucky that uh, the entrepreneurship runs in the blood uh, in my family. Um, however, after doing my master's at Uni of Leeds, um, you know, I was supported by Spark. Uh, Brian from Spark should be in the audience as well. Uh, they, they really helped me through, uh, you know, the first, uh, I guess, uh, the first kind of uh, cohort that you talked about where, you know, in terms of planning the business, understanding the business model and things like that. And uh, yeah, since then, I uh, started working with NatWest Climate Accelerator as well right now. And um, yeah, so th I've had tremendous support. And I think um, the for a lot of people, they just don't realize that these supports are available as well. So I think, um, you know, the value of uh, the supports being there, but also getting the, getting the information to the public is just as important. So just before I come on to the next speakers, very, very quick question, if you could give a very brief answer. Um, so how did you access that support? What was it about your journey that meant that you found out about that support and you felt that it was important? And I guess for people from diverse communities that are listening in, maybe there's a lesson in that. Yeah, sure. Um, for me, it was a simple Google search that I looked for workshops because I really wanted to improve myself. Like I knew, uh, I, I think I had a little bit of courage to follow the entrepreneurship journey, but like I didn't really know, you know, how I would do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that Google search led me to Spark and then the workshops there and then sort of, you know, them giving me a startup visa and then setting up my business and everything. Well, thank you, Nasif. Maybe Jane and Lorna, that's a lesson for the program here for Google Ads. <laughs> and Callum, can you tell us a little bit about what's the story behind your uh, start, for you starting your business as well? Uh, so good morning, yeah. Thank you so much, Cameron. Um, so Callum Ronan Creative started in 2016, and it was actually in response to, uh, I, I've got autism and Asperger syndrome. And I was finding it 
increasingly difficult to get a job. I'm not very good at interviews. I'm not very good at selling myself as a person. And I was really struggling to get a job. I'd also just lost my disability living allowance as well. And I was really struggling. And I thought, what would be a way to be able to help give myself a job and give myself a bit of purpose at that time? And I thought starting my own business would be the the way forward with that. Uh, Thinking about the life balance and being able to support myself and my mental health, but also on top of that, be able to do the skills that I learned at university. So Callum Brown and Creative is a podcasting agency, like you said earlier, we specialize in short form and long form podcasts. And growing up, I had to take a two hour taxi journey to school every day. And I uh, got to listen to Terry Wogan and Steve Wright and some iconic broadcasters. And that's where I actually fell in love with with radio. And that's that's how Callum Ronan Creative started, was because of my love of the fact I got to listen to Terry Wogan every day, uh, going from Ilkley to Denno. Um, So it, it started with that. And then it's just sort of grew grew on me that maybe I should do this as a career. Um, and after a lot of support at school, I went, mm, I think I can do that. Um, and then as an adult graduating from university, where where I'd, fin- I'd just finished and graduated, I went, right, let's let's make this a career now. Let's try try that af- after the all the setbacks. Um, and, th- and that's how that's how my journey started was actually through the Prince's Trust. Uh, so going with them first and then. Uh, Once we got more established and more built up as a business and the confidence to do that, um, and I I had a fantastic mentor who helped me with that side of things from the Prince's Trust, a guy called Andy. Um, We then also moved over to the NatWest Business Accelerator, and I got to work with a guy called Nick McCafferty, who did a fantastic job in guiding me and helping me structure what goals I wanted to achieve in business and uh, just about four weeks ago, I moved into my first flat, uh, thanks to the, the the hard work and support from everybody. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's my business journey so far. It's both personal and and business. Callum, that is inspirational. And I've got to say, if I close my eyes there, or if you, if they took the screen off there, you definitely have a radio voice. It's one of them ones that if I'm driving up the M1. From my in-laws down south, it's actually a voice I would love to hear on the radio. And oh, thank you. you know, it, it just re- reinforces the point that the uh, the mayor made earlier on about you know her mother telling her you know find something you love, make money from it, and you'll never feel like you've worked a day in your life. And I, I guess listening to you, it very much feels like that. And definitely also from the panelists, very much can tell you're a podcaster with the kit that you've got there. <laughs> and I look very very thank you. But Callum, thank you so much. We, we will be coming back to our panellists with a few other questions. But we'll come on to you, Tanya. Tanya, great to meet you. Great for you to take the time out and join us this morning. Tanya, can you tell us what's the story behind you starting your business? Thank you. Thank you, Cameron, uh, for having me. Uh, it's been uh, an honour, actually. Uh, starting the business, it, it was never in my dream. Um, I started, got a job. I was an employee for over 10 years and it was never in, in the horizon and circumstances uh, in the last practice I was a, an employee came about where we myself and now my business partner and then director offered to take part of the business that we were the experts doing healthcare architecture and initial reaction was like well, no, I'm an employee. I don't do business. Um, and that's something that you don't learn at university either. Where Unless you go and do business, as an actor, you learn how to be an architect. So that was um, the initial shock in a way. But then um, we took the uh, opportunity uh, and we did come across the NatWest Accelerator program as well. And we went for that and we got on board. And for me, that was uh, a, a key 
point because although I had the experience and I was doing the job of an architect and had clients and projects and everything was great, I never had the experience and the expertise to run a business, anything to do with running a business. So that um, being in a hub, being in a community, having other people like me starting, it was great help. Um, feeling that I'm not myself uh, on my own in this journey. And um, I'd, I'd like to talk about barriers. Um, and you could say as a woman, as a foreign woman, as a, a woman in a male dominated environment, these could have been the barriers. But actually in starting a business, the barrier that I found was the hardest that I got faced with was internal barriers barriers that we've come to put to ourselves because of our upbringing and our experiences that who do you think you are? Why do you think you can run a business? And that support network with the seminars and with the um, coaching that we got, very similar to what this program is offering, it opened up my eyes and my mind actually I'm putting these barriers to myself and that's what working on them and overcoming my internal barriers then the other barriers the external outside my control were easier to handle once I tackled those in my control so yeah being in a program in this supporting environment was instrumental for us Tanya, that is absolutely incredible. If you noticed, I was looking down because there were so many like little lessons of learning there that I was just writing, writing, writing. And um, yeah, I think, you know, the, the points that you've just shared there, Tanya, fantastic. But the ones that have really stuck out to me is, you know, university doesn't teach you about business. And I guess, well, this is a program that fills that gap. And that's why programs like this are incredibly important. And it's an opportunity and unlike university, we don't have huge uh, tuition fees here as well. So um, the other thing is, which I heard, Tanya, is about the importance of peer networks and yes. surrounding yourself with people who are in a similar position who you can Definitely. learn from. And finally, it's around... actually in the same uh, hub as Callum. So I've uh, come across Callum and we've had chats in the hub uh, so it really is nice to see people and you just don't feel alone that journey is not lonely when you surround with people and you get inspiration that the other people are struggling and you hear the stories how they've overcome and you're like Absolutely. okay yeah I can try that um, because of the entrepreneur journey can be lonely but yeah. not if you have and in the York, West York side like you mentioned we have such a plethora of events that you could find yourself the support network. Absolutely. And we will be coming back and unpicking some of these, I'm sure. But Krishna, over to you. And I, I apologize if I have pronounced. No, them. you're fine. It's right. Correctly. It's a, it's a delish curry paste. And um, I always say to people, if you say it with a Yorkshire accent, you can't go wrong. Delish. Delish. <laughs> So if you're ever unsure, just put your Yorkshire accent on. Um, so just very quickly, um, starting a business was something that I've always wanted to do. Um, and maybe some of the barriers that have already been mentioned were some of the reasons why I, I didn't think it was an option early on. Um, but I, want, I, knew, I always knew that whatever I did, I had to be passionate about it because um, because I'm, I'm dyslexic so I've always had to focus on stuff and I knew that if I was passionate about it then that would just give me that edge to keep going um so when we had the curry paste was something that we used um, it was made out of necessity actually for me um I was I've been a carer for my mum since I was 11 um and mixing spices and you know my favorite my favorite um, meal is um, chicken biryani, my grand's chicken biryani, and that's all I ever wanted. When I was <laughs> that's all I ever wanted. Sorry for the veggies. I do like veggie biryani too. Um, but, you know, it was it was just something I always wanted. And my mum being um, bed bound, it was it was very difficult for her to do. And, and just to just to teach your 11 year old how to cook without being there is probably something that's really, really difficult. So anyway, we got this curry paste and, and we had it. We had it for years before we started selling it. Um, so there's more to our story. And I do, um, pre-COVID, I did curry parties to explain. So just to show people how to use a product and explain a little bit about you know, how we started. 
Um, so that's that's me in a nutshell of, of why we, we started. Fantastic. And so something that was a challenge you've turned into an opportunity. And I think it leads me on to my next question to you all. That diversity can sometimes be seen as a barrier and a challenge. And I'm just really curious and interested to know from you all that has diversity in your journey also been an enabler and something that's pro uh, proven to be, um, sorry, I've just got these messages appearing, uh, has been an enabler and something that's helped you unlock uh, opportunities as well. I noticed Tanya un uh, unmuted herself there straight away. So <laughs> I'll you first. No, um, yeah, I mean, for me, being a foreigner, and even though I've been in the UK more than I was ever in Greece, I still have my accent, so it's very obvious that I'm not from here. And being a woman and in a male-dominated profession that is construction, I found myself that I'm 99% of the time the only woman in the project, the only woman on a side meeting, the uh, minority in the work environment, and that could be seen as a, a disadvantage, but somehow you find your way, and I think it's going back to what I was saying before, once you find your confidence and once you're, you um, overcome those internal barriers that you'll hear uh, in recent years talk a lot about imposter syndrome, limiting beliefs, and once you face yourself with those internal barriers you're strong enough to face the external barriers or the the disadvantages that m might be your way thank you tanya and nasif same question to yourself has diversity or your you know been an enabler or something that's helped you open up new opportunities um i think for me, diversity has been in a, it's, it's affected me in a different manner. I think, uh, like, people here in Leeds and West Yorkshire are just amazing, right? Uh, very supportive, very casual, not like down south in London, I would say. Um, but I think for me, uh, my personal values, like, uh, you know, me being a Muslim and an environmentalist and uh, running a business, you know, that's ethical and especially in a heavily greenwashed industry, um, you know, that takes its, uh, that has its challenges, I would say, more than, um, say, you know, because of uh, my race or other things in terms of like me being a minority in that sense. Um, I think people are amazing here. It's just uh, in the industry, there's a lo lot of challenges to tackle, um, which is going against my moral values and ethics rather than, uh, you know, uh, the kind of physical virtues. Thank you, Nasi. Callum or Krishna, would you like to respond to that question? Callum, yeah, we'll come to you. Hey, thank you. Yeah, so it, it, I've got a bit of an alternative view to diversity in the sense with, with around disability, in the sense of the first time I ever went to a networking event, I was I was all over the place. I was struggling because of how um, how to cope in a big environment where there's lots of people, there's lots of noise and sounds and lights and, and everything like that. And over time, I've sort of developed and learned techniques to be able to cope in those situations. And it's, uh, I, I call it the waveform. And it's this idea of how to have a conversation with somebody. And it's where the, the waveform of a conversation should go like this. So up and down means that the two people are talking to each other. And that's how I learned to be able to cope in a situation where having a conversation with somebody, that's how it should work. There should be a nice flow and a rhythm to it. Um, and that, and I use that technique in, in every situation now, wherever I go to a networking event pre-COVID or um, I'm going to my first networking event in 18 months tonight. So it's a bit of an experiment again. Um, but what the point I want to make is we do have some fantastic networking institutions here in Yorkshire. Yorkshire Mafia being another example of that. Leeds Trinity uh, University's networking as well. Um, but I think it's having in the back of the mind when we're running these sorts of events of how do we make that accessible to people with disabilities, whether that be a neurological disability like myself or a physical disability, 
whether they're the wheelchair bound or something like that. And I think that's that that would be my point of point of view is how do we make if we want to get more disabled entrepreneurs into running businesses and feeling like they can go out and market themselves, it's how do we make that space accessible to them? Ta. And I think, you know, the conversations I've had with Jay and Lorna, and I'm sure the whole team reflects the same viewpoint, is that, you know, this is a learning journey. And I'm sure everyone who's got a suggestion, an idea, you know, this is a, you know, a co-produced program. And if people want to contribute, please, please, please write it in the chat. If you've got a question that will open up learning, put it in the Q&A. Um, Krishna, we're going to come to you next. Uh, and then I'm going to have one more question. But what I want all the panelists to do, we've got about 10 minutes to, to wrap up this part, but is to think about your kind of 30 second to a minute uh, closing remarks. Like what, what is it that you want to say? Maybe the questions doesn't, have not allowed you to share but what's the, what's the learning points or what's the points you want to share? And I'll give everyone a minute at the end, but I've got another question but before I come on to that. Krishna, what's your view on, has diversity been an enabler to you? Has it opened new opportunities for yourself? Um, yes, I, I, I think it has. I mean, it's just something that you're aware of all the time. And it's, you, you know, I think for me, really, it's more about... Um, you're, in business, unfortunately, it's like Callum said, it, you know, it is about your personal and it's business as well. So it's about um, what you need to do. And if there's access to support for things, then, you know, you look for it. And if you find it and it's there, then, you know, you have to use it really because it, it's available to you. So I would just recommend to anybody and everybody is just, you know, go for it really. And I think this is what I'm really enjoying about um, learning about this new you know this new funding stream is that it's making so many things accessible to people maybe that haven't had the opportunity so you, you really need to just just go for it and share it we you know it, it doesn't I, I know you've gone through all the campaigns different ways of sharing things but we can all do our bit you know we just start to our to the next person we speak to we just need to be aware of it and you know and just share it um, because it might not be for them but they might say you know so and so's you need to speak to so-and-so, they know something about it. And you, you know, and that's that's literally word of mouth, isn't it? It's how we do it. So I think we just need to share really. Um and, and share. I think that's that's an incredible point, Krishna. And I think for the panelists, I don't know if you've seen the comments that are coming up. I'm not reading them, but I know as they're appearing, there's just the first kind of few words. But all the comments that are coming up are how incredible the panelists are and how incredible your insights are. So, you know, great, great uh, stuff there. Um, I, I know one of you made a comment, I think it was Nassif made a comment around the difference of being based in Yorkshire over London. And, you know, as a proud Yorkshireman, I think it is incredible that Yorkshire has got these programs and, uh, you know, in particular West Yorkshire is providing this support for entrepreneurs. But my next question is to all of you actually is, how important are programs like this on your entrepreneurial journey to starting your business? And I want to give a shout out to NatWest. I think it's only rightfully so. I think all of you have mentioned that you've been on a NatWest program. Um, so I'm sure you've benefited and you know, you're all confident and sharing your stories. So I'm sure they're doing something right there. But that was another enterprise program. So how important are programs like the one we're launching today to entrepreneurs and is there a uh, a message you would share to someone who's who's maybe reluctant or on the fence thinking about starting their entrepreneurial journey you know let's go to tanya first this time yes uh really really good question uh cameron and one thing that has followed me that was really early in my entrepreneurial journey that um i need to get my wording right so getting something wrong you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and getting something wrong it's not a mistake as long as you learn from it it's a learning experience i think that's really really key because we've all have those voices oh no you don't know that oh no you, you haven't mastered that yet oh no don't do that don't take the next step but we don't learn, we don't grow, we don't develop 
unless we do take that step in the unknown. In if we keep doing what we know how to do, we stay where we are. We just need to um, get that step in the direction of the unknown and where that leads us where we want to go. I think that I came across it early in my journey, and I'm still doing that. And it's not. It doesn't happen overnight. You constantly have to do that step outside your comfort zone. Okay, I think I think that is. I, I'm sure there's everyone that's listening in has heard that and has got a metaphor or a phrase that they've heard that reflects that. And I guess a program like this is that when you do make that mistake or you do come across that challenge, there's someone there to speak to to support. Whether that's the peer network whether it's the mentors that Callum spoke about and how important they are, or just having someone who's got that expertise and knowledge, and that's what this programme will be providing. Um, exactly, yeah. very... Hear, hearing it from others, yeah. it's uh, so comforting that actually it's fine. Yeah. I'm going to finish on this question with Krishna, and then I'm going to give everyone an opportunity just to kind of their 30-second minute closing pitch. I want to respect the agenda, and I know... We've got uh, Sir Roger coming on at 10.30 and I don't want to be late. So, Krishna. Yeah, just carrying on from Tanya, actually, just just something that I think that, that if, if I'm really scared of something in my business journey, it might take me a few weeks, but I know that that's what I need to focus on. And it's it's like using your fear to guide you a little bit as well, you know, rather than it being rather than it being a barrier. I think, actually, let me think about that. What's that telling me? And I think that helps with my... Um, with my journey for uh, actually applying for support or, or looking for support was that um, we did a, a quick uh, questionnaire on because um, like I said the product was to use for us we did a quick questionnaire and I thought it had come back negative and nobody would want to use it and unfortunately it came back really positive so that meant that I had to start a business but I sat on that for ages um, because I didn't know where to go I didn't know what to do and I remember finding the questionnaires and thinking I need to do something with this because I don't want to wake up in 10 years time and think find these again later down the line and think why didn't I do it? I'd rather, like Tony said, I'd rather fail. I'd rather do it all wrong and wake up and know that I had, I gave it a go. It wasn't for me or find that I'm in a different situation. And just going back to your question, um, at that point, we um, we got, we did get some pre-start um, support, um, which I think it's the only thing that I've seen in the last five or six years. So this is really exciting about this new, this new funding stream. Um, and then the other thing um, was that it, a lot of the support that we've had has been for B2B businesses and not necessarily B2C. So that's another really exciting thing about, um, about this, this funding stream that, you know, that I really want people to understand that it, it's actually, it's opening up to another, another area. And as much as I've enjoyed all the support that I've had, and I, I appreciate every single minute and penny, um, the, the, the fact is that there's, there's always been a drive to do something that I wasn't quite ready for, which was the B2B. I, I wanted to focus more on the B2C. However, that is something that, you, you know, you, you get in here. So it's it's definitely worth worth um, sharing. Thank you, Krishna. So I'm mindful it's 10.29. I'm going to ask you for a, literally, it's, I'm going to go in. Callum, Nasif, uh, Krishna, Tanya, Literally 20, 30 seconds. Um, I want you to answer this. Uh, oh, f first, sorry, go ahead and share with us what you, you want to share, which you didn't have an opportunity to share. 20, 30 seconds, Callum first. So I, I think just my last note for today would be this. If you see an entrepreneur who's disabled, give them, uh, you know, give them as much support as you can. Because it's quite scary when you've got something like autism and Asperger's uh, syndrome, and especially when they're, they're going into the the, un, the the uncomfortable zone, as I call it sometimes, um, it, it will they will find it difficult to sometimes maybe progress as quickly as other businesses. So it might not be the fastest growing tree in the world being a disabled entrepreneur, but it will grow and flourish into something quite beautiful in the end. So that's my passive note. So thank you. Thank you, Callum. And uh, some of the best things take time to emerge. So there's nothing wrong with that taking time. Nasif. Uh, I completely echo with 
uh, what everyone said about the seeking discomfort bit because uh, I came here, you know, so far away from my family and friends back home. And I think, uh, honestly, I think there's there's quite a lot of students who come all the way to Yorkshire or England to do their masters or, you know, very bright, brilliant students who aren't seeing this opportunity, you know, and what made me stay here through these kind of, uh, you know, uh, Spark and NatWest and, you know, all their support. So I think uh, there needs to be also like that look uh, from the LEP. I think uh, the lab needs to like look at, you know, how to bring those minds and keep them here and use them to sort of support the society as well. Thank you, Nasif. And very, very quickly, Krishna and then Tanya. Uh, probably just really, really quickly, just to say that, you know, I think already in West Yorkshire, we have one of the best networking at, and I can I can say that, but just talking to other people in different areas, you know, I've known through like the last 10 years that we have such a great um, mark, um, networking um, system set up in, in, in our area. And, you know, even if there was no support, the fact that other businesses and other people are just sharing their knowledge and time um, is is invaluable. And I think that I think we'll go really far um, as a county just based on that, you know, the, the amount that people want to share. And it relates back to a bit about Callum, you know, it, it, it really, if anybody wants to, uh, to talk to you, maybe just 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 see what, you know, what, what they want. And if you can spare some time and some support, then again, if we all just do our little bit, we can really make a difference. Thank you, Krishna. That's a very, very, very uh, important point. And finally, Tanya. It's worth mentioning, and I think we touched on it, but starting a business in West Yorkshire, it doesn't mean it stays in West Yorkshire. As a business, we work nationally with projects all over the country, including Scotland. So use this program, use West Yorkshire as your springboard, and from here, you can work wherever you want. Someone mentioned it earlier, the world is your oyster. The world is your oyster. Anchored in locally rooted and then globally connected is actually the, uh, our strapline at Impact of Bradford. But anchored here in Yorkshire and then you can get wherever yeah. you want. Dropping the anchor. I just want to say a massive thank you. And if we can have a virtual round of applause for Nasif Callum, Tanya and Krishna have been incredible, incredible panelists. It's, you know, they're, they're, the words that just keep coming is, you know, great closing comments, inspirational, fantastic, great panelists. It's been non-stop positive and I think you should feel proud. I want to say thank you for taking the time out. I know as entrepreneurs, you can be incredibly, incredibly stretched and then taken out an hour or two here is a big commitment. It is a big sacrifice and we do really recognize and appreciate that. But thank you so much. We're going to move the uh, agenda on uh, swiftly and I'm not going to take much more time because I think you would much more rather hear from our next speaker who's going to be interviewed by Sir Roger Marsh is Heba Bevan and just to mention from early, um, the point I raised earlier on I think Heba was last month voted uh, by Vodafone Woman of the Year in Innovation and just to kind of do a full circle on this she was presented her award from Saran Jones and the office I'm based in Two years ago, Saran Jones were literally outside here filming Gentleman Jack, and we used to see her for two weeks every day as the whole cast and props were here. Now, the bios for Sir Roger Marsh and Heber are too long. I could take the remaining half an hour just uh, giving an overview on their bi biographies, but I just want to say Sir Roger Marsh, who is the chair of Leeds City Region Let Board, and uh, I think I'm right in saying one of the most diverse and inclusive let boards in the country who also secured the biggest biggest sorry growth deal in the country for our region uh, and also on a personal level has been my mentor and buddy on the let partnership and has been giving me great insights and learning so i want to say thank you for that and heba bevan who runs utterberry who we're going to hear from so i'm going to hand over to you sir roger who will be interviewing heba and i'm i'm going to actually enjoy listening to this so um yeah over to you Thank you, Cameron, and uh, and wel welcome, Heber. But perhaps I may, may make a couple of um, remarks. Congratulations to all of you, Nasif, Callum, Tanya, and Krishna. That was that re re really, really, really rewarding to me. Uh, uh, and thinking about 
the journey we've been on as a region that recognised innovation-driven entrepreneurship was actually key to the economic future, as well as to the fabric of the society of West Yorkshire Stoke Leeds City Region. Also, thank you to you, Cameron. Um, I reflected on the first time we met. And, you know, your instincts, I'm happy to say my instincts, even though I'm advancing in age, my instincts seem to still be reasonably good at picking out winners. And I thought, you know, Cameron's just the sort of young man it would be nice to have on the let board and uh, and perhaps uh, perhaps help on this particular journey. Um, some interesting takeaways. The mindset of can do, will do. Um, uh, Winston Churchill had some interesting words, which I think echo what a number of people said. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to carry on that counts. Uh, and more recently, uh, the late Alan Turing, who said those who can imagine anything can create the impossible. And we've heard many messages. So mo moving to somebody who is incredibly inspiring, and we are incredibly privileged not only to have her time this morning, but have her as part of our business community now, is, uh, is Heba Bevan, who uh, I think has just about got off a plane or recently got off a plane from Lisbon. And uh, I know that she's a lady of a massive energy. Uh, and and I think also echoes something, and it's always interesting how people in our lives have uh, influenced us. My late dad always used to say to me when I was somewhat younger than I am now growing up in the Northeast, Roger, always remember this, if you don't know where you're going, you have no, you have no right to be disappointed where you end up. And it's about knowing where you're going. So let's hear about Utterbury and, uh, and, and to hear from uh, Heber about, uh, you know, about Utterbury, and then we can perhaps talk about why West Yorkshire is the right place for the next part of Heber's exciting journey. So Heber, tell us a little bit about Utterbury uh, and where you, you where you fit in. And obviously you don't get accolades like you have recently got because actually you're, not, you're a nice person, although you are a nice person, but actually you're an incredibly competent and driven business lady. Well, thank you very much uh, to you all and uh, for your kind words. Um, it's uh, good morning, everybody. I'm really sorry. I am still in the airport. I managed to go through the lines, <laughs> rush it through them to make this, uh, this meeting. And I do apologize that I missed uh, all of your talks. Um, it's, in, it's incredible to be part of uh, Leeds. I was born in Leeds, actually. And I left Leeds when I was a three. Uh, coming back is like coming home. And uh, it's um, as, uh, as an engineer and before I'm CEO, I am an actor an engineer, I'm an electronics and computer engineer, and I love the creativity. I love uh, making things and getting our products in the hands of people. And I think there is no other best place to do it other than Leeds, to be honest. Um, we are very, very, very proud on what we've done so far. Uh, so we are based in, um, in Sovereign Street. I hope when we open up most of you will come and visit us and will see us there. Uh, but it's been overwhelming with, um, with the connectivity and people trying to help. One of the ladies here, um, when I just joined in, she said, um, I think it's uh, Krishna. Um, she said, oh, the, the connectivity is very, very important and it's very, um, it's very noticeable in Yorkshire. And I, I definitely echo that. I think the people and uh, how they gravitas everybody and trying to make something and do something. And this has absolutely been um, overwhelming just to actually see how the society and the council has been um, trying to help us to recruit. We've got massive recruitment going through right now. So please, if you know people and good people, send them to us. We would like to um, to have as many of the uh, of a good Yorkshire people coming in and be part of our um, our exciting new. Uh, I wouldn't call it manufacturing because it's very different. We are really really conscious on CO2 sustainability, and uh, since I opened up the company eight years ago, we've been super sustainable. So Alterbury is a low power wireless sensor network. We don't sell sensors, we lease them. And we actually uh, make sure that the data that we save, it's 
very, very process and what, the, what we need. Because people underestimate when we save data, actually that is not sustainable for long term. It does use a huge amount of, um, uh, of electricity, which is, it could be an impact on CO2. So process data and having an edge computing, it's very critical for us. And we are the only supplier in the UK for IoT solution that have 5G solution. So um, that's a bit about me. And, um, and, and, and thank you very much uh, again for having us. So Heba, um, we obviously met through the discussions we had. You know, your business is made, you know, based uh, in the south in Cambridge. And yes, you have a heritage here, here in Leeds, and that's always helpful in West Yorkshire. But actually, when you think about West Yorkshire as a place to start up a business, or in your case, to expand your business, you know, what, what, are, what are the key things that, uh, that, that actually have struck you? Because uh, actually it's helpful to those who haven't yet started their businesses in West Yorkshire as to why actually this is a good place to give it a give it a go and get that can do will do approach to success. So otherwise it's been out, out of Cambridge University, um, but all of our work, the major of it, especially when we started, it was in London. So we are literally in the city of London, the one mile by one mile, and in the heart of it. Um, but to have, um, when, when we decided that we are going to have a factory and a hub that bring in innovation, we wanted a place that is close to universities uh, and many universities, not one university. And uh, in, in the north, actually, there is, if we, if we look in even to the top 30 or 40, there is many of the northern universities are in in that table and a good education. So uh, Leeds, um, we wanted to become, we, we need to be near the train station. It was very important for us. So we can provide the people that commute and going to Leeds, I'm going tomorrow. It's only two hours uh, from London. So our, um, uh, our office is, is super connect. It doesn't have a uh, deal of a different corporation. It's a one corporation. And uh, the facilities that need to bring in, uh, in terms of uh, trying to get um, people into the city and the businesses and introductions and making the connectivity with that. And I think even the people, they are proud of using Made in Yorkshire. And we want to create Made in Yorkshire for that. So that would be, that would be really, really uh, exciting for us and very, um, um, well, it's, it's a bit ambitious, but we are there. So it's, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's just uh, it's the time for us to, to get that done. I think an important point that in, in all material respects, uh, West Yorkshire and the wider Leeds city region is a, is a mini UK, right slap bang in the middle. And if you look on a, a, a map of the world flattened out, we're actually in the middle of the world. If you think about where we are looking east and looking west. So that maybe is helpful for us to make the point that aren't we, we're not just in Yorkshire, we're at the heart of the, of the globe. Um, when you think about uh, the barriers you faced uh, starting the business, Heba, you know, were there any particular lessons that, that, that you know, perhaps hard yards you had to go down um, that would be useful to share with not only the budding entrepreneurs on on the panel, but you know those listening in today. The particular, you know, top top three or otherwise that you had to face, and also how you overcame them. Uh, I think for any entrepreneurship or any 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 anyone who uh, need to open a business, they will face risk, and risk is there always. And if you can't manage risk, you can't actually uh, start a business. Um, there are so many hurdles we've had. Um, and when I started the business, we had um, regulations. Um, our, our sector is super regulated. Um, the sector that we picked is one of the hardest to get into, which is construction. It's, um, it's very old fashioned. Um, and although Atterbury is not just in infrastructure and construction, 
and we are in uh, multiple things, blockchain technology, uh, health tech, uh, sports, um, railway, but our work when we started, it was one of the hardest to actually prevent uh, construction to adapt in new ways and a new technology of, um, of changing the way they think and they use technology. Until now, we still have people going with a clipboard into the site, and we're trying to change that. Uh, I've shut down bridges, and some people got angry at me, and I needed to deal with them, just show them the risk and how we need to mitigate it, and what we need to make sure our people are safe and everybody is, uh, is going home. And I think um, what, we, what we've done and showing them the saving that we achieved, like uh, to give an example, Barbican Station, uh, we monitored it for one year. That meant for London Underground, a saving of 11 million pounds per week. Multiply that by 12 months, uh, sorry, 12, um, sorry, 52 weeks. That is over a half a billion pound of saving. And that's in one station. We did eight stations. So um, the acceptance from certain people, it was hard because they, they were thinking, oh, we're taking jobs. Actually, we weren't taking jobs in, in that sector. We were trying to change the people uh, attitude and how to measure this and reach an over into seeing the data and evaluating the data. We can't see certain things like minor cracks within concrete and infrastructure. It's very hard to figure out. And it's sometimes too late to actually get detected. But the only way we do it, we have to look into the minute changes and our system enable us to do that. And that's why it's, um, it's been really good for a sport uh, as well and how to analyze the sport. And the same thing is what we are going on right now in our uh, venture into the healthcare. But definitely regulation, um, policies, understanding what's AI, machine learning, it's been one of the tricky parts to just to get over the mindset and the people just to understand the technology and how to adapt it. Interesting you say that. If you think about um, convincing, building on that, convincing people to to back your idea, what 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 would your tips be to to uh, to all of those listening in to because uh, because confidence, you know, Callum talked about it actually, and everybody talked about it in a different way. What 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 reflections do you have on your journey that would be insightful to the young men and women uh, that are listening in, or anybody else? It doesn't have to be young. We can all, you know, I might start a business. Maybe I'll have to give that a go. Maybe that's something I should do in my so-called semi-retirement, I'll start another one at least. Any particular tips you'd like to share, Eva? Because yours has been such a spectacular success. It's not been without extraordinary hard work and dedication. I think time, um, you, need to, you need to be prepared to spend time. Uh, you need to be able to take risks and you need to be able to stick to your guns and basically uh, approve every single thing that you said you're going to do and just keep on at it. Um, one of the things which is um, uh, to change people's mindset is very hard, but to prove it, and especially in scientific way, and to have the path behind that and show them the difference um, between what they could achieve and where they can get to, mm. I think it's massively important. and. Science has been the back of that um, because without the analyzing of certain data and going through the science of it and trusting your team, you need to build a team and the team is very important. They need to be switched on. They need to understand your vision and, and, and drive with it because it's, uh, business is not built on one person. It's actually on on a massive team or even a small team start, but then it grows up. But if your team not with you, and you need to have the A-listers in your team and you need to get these people in, in the same kind of path to what you believe in, because otherwise you are, you're alone and it doesn't work. In a business, you need to be 
with the community. And I think what's nice with Leeds, actually, um, we're dealing with multiple um, companies now within Leeds. We want to work with as many Yorkshire uh, home and bread kind of companies. And I think it's, um, and we are working with them uh, and, and to get to in touch with them, they need to understand what's your vision and how can you work together? And I think one thing um, in the UK, unfortunately, we're not very good in supply chain. And we've got so many, and, and the problem is with the startups, they always think they are fighting each other or they are competing with each other rather than actually working with each other. And it's one thing which is, I would say, don't be worried from competition. If you are, if you don't have a competition, you're doing something wrong because competition is healthy. That means you are in a right track. So this is one of the main things which you have to kind of accept and taking a risk. Yes, you will, any, any business man or woman, they will have to take a huge amount of risk during that. And during eight years of Atterbury, We've taken a major risk. Even when we went into healthcare, we knew the policies aren't there to support our product. We knew that we have to file patents. We have to go through uh, medical uh, examinations. We had to approve every single bit of it. But we are doing that. And we just have to just trust the science and move on to it. So when you take a risk, you just um, accept it and measure it. and and see the impact and try to stay very, very close to these people who are supporting you because you need them in during the way. And without them, you would not, no business can be successful, to be honest. Well, I think quite elegantly summed up in purpose, patience and persistence by the sound of it and people. Maybe the four Ps are very germane to this. Um, in the interest of time, um, uh, uh, Heber, and it's an incredible story, and you know we could probably spend another hour uh, hearing more. If you had to pick one piece of advice for all of those budding entrepreneurs, early stage businesses thinking about the scale up journey you've been on, if you had to think of one thing, what what would you say uh, beyond obviously that uh, continuing to back yourself? Work hard. <laughs> if you want to succeed, you have to work hard. And if you think easy comes, it's the easy go. So you need to work hard. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right then. And, uh, you know, a, a, a former American president who sadly got uh, cut down said, uh, Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And this is what we're trying to do is to create a vibrant, innovation-driven entrepreneurial economy that is the envy of the world, not just our near neighbours in South Yorkshire or Humberside otherwise. So thank you, Heber, for A, making the time available, and you've just evidenced how hard you work, that you've got off a plane, got through customs, got through everywhere else and been able to be on a computer just in time. And that's uh, that's an amazing feat. So thank you, Heber, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Oh, so thank that, you very, very much. I'm going to hand back to, uh, to Cameron to... To, to close off and perhaps take some Q&As and thank him yet again for his, uh, his chairmanship of this, uh, of this morning. Thank you, Sir Roger, and thank you, Heber. An absolute salute to you, Heber. Listening to that is incredible. And you missed it earlier on. I'm a father to two daughters and role models such as yourself. Um, women in industries which, are, you know, where you've really made a breakthrough is important for me as a father so my daughter can look up and think, actually, that is an industry I can get into because people like Heber or Tracy or Krishna or Tanya are in them industries. So thank you so much for that. Um, we've got five minutes, and I do want to respect the agenda and the time on people's time. So we will aim to finish bang on 11 o'clock. We've got a couple of questions. If someone can bring the uh, entrepreneurs the, back on, and if you could put Lorna and Jane back onto the screen, then I have a few questions which I want to ask. So I'm going to ask, um, and we're really looking for very quick, quick answers here, like maybe just a sentence. Uh, I've got two questions for the entrepreneurs and then three questions to Jane and Lorna, uh, which is more about the logistics and uh, the program itself. 
So the first question to the panelists, the entrepreneurs, so that's Tanya Nasif, Krishna Heba and Callum. Um, having access support, would you prefer, you know, when you were needing support, would you prefer a rigid program of support or would you pr prefer a flexible program that you could dip in and out of as and when you needed? So I'll go to Tanya first. I think flexible to start with and then to dip in and out. Okay, Nasif, to yourself. Um, I think, uh, yeah, flexibility is quite important for any business with the kind of workload you have. But some kind of accountability is, uh, was very helpful for me as a solo entrepreneur. And I think that would, uh, a lot of others would echo with it as well. Fantastic. Krishna? Uh, I, I work better as an academic, so maybe a little bit more structure um, for me, but with then the space to um, to be yourself and be creative and create your own ideas. So for me, it's a bit it's a bit of both, really. I think that you need the structure to keep you focused and then, you know, the space to to be you and create what you want to create. Thank you, Heba. I, I don't know how relevant the question is, but when you first started out, what was more important to you? Was it a, a, a program of support that was quite flexible or something that was rigid? I would echo everybody. I think a bit of both, but um, dipping in and out is very, um, sometimes very useful, especially with people who are really organized. They just need to get what they need at a certain time. Uh, so I would definitely say, for me personally, I think dipping in and out, I rather it would be, it would be, it would be better for me. Flexible tanky heba and Callum to yourself. So I, I I would say it's certainly having a bit of structure if you're in your early days of starting your business, a structured course, I think goes down a treat and uh, and really enables and helps a business. I think once you start to get, you know, six to twelve months into that sort of cycle of learning and developing. I think you can then have that greater flexibility to to go and explore the key things that enable your business. So I, I, I would I'd say a mixture of both. Fantastic. So Carolyn, could we just put Sir Roger back onto the main panel? It's like there's, he's there uh, alone. And I think the rest of the people who have joined the call today were on, so it's only fair. Um, this question's to Jane and Lorna. So I'm gonna put, uh, I've got three quick fire questions for you. Uh, is there any grant funding available for businesses through this program? So this is not a grant program. This is mentoring and advice for businesses. So there's no grant funding available directly through this program. Fantastic. So Jane can take the next question. What do you mean by startup? What age of business is this? Off mute. Sorry, Cameron. Um, so what we're looking at for startup is the, the Workstream 2 will work with businesses up to 12 months. Um, but what people need to be aware of, we've got an ecosystem that will support people right through to three years. So there are other pieces of support out there that we can direct people to. So to reiterate, that's up to 12 months uh, or pre-start up. And if you are further along the line, don't hesitate to get in touch because there might be other stuff. And then final question to both Lorna and Jane is, how will it work between the Startup West Yorkshire programme and the new Startup Managers? Lorna, if you could take that first. Yeah, and sorry, just to come back to the previous point about the grants, because I should have mentioned that there are other programmes out there, like the Core Adventure programme, for example. So just because this particular programme isn't a grant fund, there may be support available for businesses. So please do get in touch. Um, and in terms of the kind of links between Workstream 2, Startup West Yorkshire and the Startup Managers, the Startup Managers will be there to support people in their districts from pre-startup to three years old. So they will be on a journey with those businesses and they will We'll be able to link them into any support as and when it's relevant be that this program or anything else that's available within the the local authority so they will be a constant point of support for those businesses on a longer journey this particular program is something that will be there to support businesses at the outset or up to 12 months of trading to be able to access those workshops that will support them with that fantastic i'm gonna wrap up but before i do there was a few more questions but like i mentioned at the beginning Lorna, Jane and the team at West Yorkshire Combined Authority will put an FAQ together 
They will share the slides. They will share contact details. Can I just, all the panelists that are on the screen now, could you just smile, look into the camera? I want to take one screenshot so we can share it later on. Fantastic. I've got a screenshot there. So it's 11 o'clock. I think it's only fair, you know, participants have taken out two hours to join us or an hour and 45 today. I, I want to respect that. I just want to quickly summarise. I want to say a massive thank you to um, starting off with uh, who's had to leave the mayor, Tracy Brabin, Medina and the uh, young girls from Batley Girls High School. Uh, I want to say thank you to Lorna Jane uh, for sharing insights and uh, overview and putting this event together. I want to say thank you to Naseef, Krishna, Callum and Tanya for kind of taking time out of their diaries, to Heber and Roger for a fantastic learning experience and them insights is, was a learning experience to hear from people that we maybe want to be aspirational to and get to Utterbury stage. And to Carolyn, who has been in the background kind of managing, and she's from the West Yorkshire and North Yorkshire Chamber of Commerce, who's been managing this and doing all the technical stuff uh, to make it work today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it insightful. Just to reiterate the couple of points I shared at the beginning, if you're sat on the fence, if you're thinking about a career change and you think enterprise might be for you, this is the program to get in touch with. If you're an entrepreneur who's started up within the past 12 months, thinking of starting, get in touch. If you are from a diverse community in particular, people from uh, disabled backgrounds, from minoritized BME backgrounds, uh, and female starters and entrepreneurs, please, please get in touch. Or if you are someone who works with these diverse communities, please share this opportunity with your networks. And finally, if you have any suggestions as a result of hearing the, uh, about the program today, any feedback, please get in touch with Jane and Lorna. They really would like to hear your feedback and are more than uh, happy if it's uh, possible to do so to adapt and make this program responsive to the needs of the communities that they seek to serve. Uh, thank you to the Leeds uh, Local Enterprise Partnership, West Yorkshire Combined Authority for putting this together. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. It's been a fantastic session. Thank you so much. Bye.